Hi, it's John from Android Addicts, and this is the September benchmark test for the Galaxy S21 series. So on the left we have the Exynos 2100, and on the right we have the Snapdragon 888. So I know it's October currently, but the Snapdragon has only just today received its September update, which is quite disappointing really. The Exynos over here, you can see, is waiting to install its October update, and I don't know what's happened to the Snapdragon, but over the last few months it has had some issues with its updates. If you know what those were, let me know down below in the comments, but I believe there was an issue with the initial August update, which caused some problems with the screen refresh rate. And so there were actually two updates for August for the Snapdragon 888. And the Exynos was fine, it didn't have any issues as far as I'm aware, so it's just had its updates as per normal. So I've had to wait until today, which is October the 12th, for the Snapdragon to get the September update. I will put the build versions on the screen so you can see exactly what these phones are both running. So when the Snapdragon gets this October update, I don't really know, but neither of them have actually had any camera improvements. So I think the days of doing camera comparison tests are probably over for these two. I think they've had their run now and they're just gonna sit and get their security updates until they stop getting any future updates at all. So as per usual, we're gonna start with the Geekbench CPU test here. So I will skip through this and we will see what the results are at the end. Don't forget I do have a link in the description where you can see a table of all the results for both of these phones since they released so we can compare all the benchmark scores to your heart's desire. Okay so the results are in here and we've got some improvements here for the single core so the Exynos compared to last month has gone up just a few points from 105.9 to 106.8. The multi-score has actually sadly gone down from 3390 down to 3262. With the Snapdragon, we can see that we've gone up from 1040 up to 1094, so that's really good. Nice score there. And the multi-core has actually gone from 3258 all the way up to 3407, which is one of the higher ones that we've seen on this phone. And I'm just going to go through the single core performance here if you want to pause and have a look at any of the results. Okay, and we only went up to 32 degrees Celsius on both as well. So previously we were getting around 35. Now the room temperature in here is around 20 degrees Celsius at the moment, so that will obviously play a part in that as well. So we're gonna move on to the compute benchmark now and see how that performs. It's certainly good to see the Snapdragon has actually improved since last month though. Right, so the compute scores are in as well and we can see that the Exynos has improved since last month. So we've got 7385 compared to 7294 in August. And the Snapdragon has also improved by 10 points here. So it's got a score of 4654 compared to 4644 in the August firmware. Again, we're not getting too hot here at the moment. They're both at 33 degrees, but I will let these cool down before we move on to the Antutu test, which is next. Right, so the phones are more normal temperature now. They were both at around 28 degrees, but the Snapdragon has popped up to 30 degrees just now, so there's only so much I can do. But we're gonna move on to Antutu now and just have a look. Now I have updated this to the latest version currently, which is 9.1.7 on both. And we can see the previous scores here from August. So let's just test them again and see if they can improve from last month's scores.
Right, so the Antutu benchmarkers is finished and these are definitely the best scores I've seen on both phones since they launched, basically. Now, I do know that the version of Antutu may affect these somewhat, but compared to last month, for example, we've gone to 736,897 on the Exynos, whereas last month we were only getting 694,514. Now, similar story on the Snapdragon here, we've gone up to 746,180 compared to last month's 745,649. So it's a huge improvement really on both phones. And I'm really happy to see that things haven't gone downhill because obviously over time, people do seem to think that, you know, Samsung do things to their phones to make them uh, perform worse. But these scores are certainly very nice to see. We can see temperature wise, they increased about the same. Obviously the Exynos started at 28, whereas the Snapdragon started at 30. So around eight and a half degrees increase on both phones, slightly more battery usage on the Exynos by 1%. So those are really interesting. I'm gonna let these cool down now and then we're gonna move on to the stress test and just see how they get on with that. Right then, we're back down to a more reasonable 28 degrees on both. So I'm gonna go into the stress test now and these are last month's results. So we're gonna test again and just see how they do. Again, we're gonna go into the settings here it always seems to change it back to 45 minutes. We're going to go to 15 minutes with a safety temperature of 50 degrees. Close that and we'll start them both off. Both current at 20, oh sorry, Exynos at 29, Snapdragon at 28, 87% battery on both. I'm just going to do this for 15 minutes. Skip to the end of this as it is highly boring and we'll see how the graphs look at the end. Okay, so the stress tests are just finished and we've got some interesting results again this month. So let's look at the Exynos 2100 first. And we can see here in comparison to the August update, it's quite a similar story, but I do feel like it's hitting 80% a bit more than it was in the previous month's update. So apart from the sort of dip here at around 534, we can see that around the seven minute mark, 722 here, we can see it is sort of hitting 80% a lot more than in August. And throughout the rest of the test also, it's keeping up quite high where it was dipping a lot more to 60 last month. We have got a big dip there at 11 minutes down to 40%. But towards the end of the test again, we're back up to nearly 80% all the time, which for the Exynos is quite good. So yeah, not the 100% that we'd like or 90% we would like, but still not bad whatsoever. So now if we have a look at the cores here for the Exynos, we can see, again, a very similar sort of result to last month. It's quite hard to actually distinguish the different cores here, but they are all sort of staying around the 2.2, 2.3 gigahertz mark, which is very similar to last month's. So not a huge amount of difference there, as far as I can see. Like I said, it is quite messy and it isn't hitting the maximum that these cores can handle. So the throttling still exists, sadly, with this update. So if we have a look at the Snapdragon now, we can see that the CPU performance does look a lot better than it was last month. We're hitting 100% much more frequently, but it is still sort of hovering around this 60% mark, which isn't very good at all. We're also getting those dips to the 40% mark quite frequently here across the whole test, which seems to be a bit worse than it was last month, I'd say. But towards the end of the test, it does pick up a bit more and doesn't dip as low as it did in August. But yeah, it's still not as much as we have seen in the past. Now, the good thing to see here is when we look at the CPU cores and we're back to almost perfect lines throughout the test. So compare this to last month, you can see in August, we did get that dip at the 12.45 mark. There's a slight little blip there, but otherwise it's all perfectly fine. So the cores are running back up to their maximum potential, I'd say, which is really great to see, so I'm impressed that the Snapdragon has come back to its former glory in that sense. Right then, I've let the phones cool down a bit here. We've cleared everything out of memory and we're just gonna move on to the 3 d Mark test now. So again, we're starting at around 27, 28 degrees here. We'll start with the wildlife test on both. Right, so the wildlife test is just finished and we've scored a lovely 5895 on the Exynos here, which is a lot higher than it was last month at 5802. So again, this is one of the highest scores we've actually had on the Exynos 2100, not the highest, but one of the highest. And similar story to the Snapdragon here, we have got a nice score of 5820, which compared to last month's 5764 is a nice little improvement there. So we can see the average frame rate on the Exynos 2100 was 35.3, 
compared to 34.9 on the Snapdragon. So I'll let the phones cool down a tiny bit and then we'll move on to the slingshot test. Okay, we've cooled down to 30 degrees here, so I'm gonna start off the slingshot test on both and we'll come back with the results and just see how they compare again to last month's. Okay, so the slingshot has just finished and we can see that we're still maxed out here on the Exynos, whereas we're getting a score of 8102 on the Snapdragon. So last month we were also maxed out on the Exynos, whereas on the Snapdragon we only scored 8006. So it has improved by nearly 100 points overall, so that's nice to see. And we can see the graphic scores here. So the average frame rate, 76 versus 59, 52 versus 35 for the first two graphics tests. Physics tests, the Snapdragon overall is a bit better. So, well, quite a bit better. We've got 71 versus 86, 42 versus 51, and 24 versus 27. Right, so that concludes the September benchmark update. And I think overall, hopefully you agree that they've both actually seen some improvements since last month. It is a shame, however, that the Snapdragon is lagging behind with its update schedule. I would hope to see at least, you know, within the month to get the uh, latest security update installed. But yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's happening there. Hopefully it will start to iron out a bit better. Like I said, we are waiting to install the October update here on the Exynos, but there's nothing yet available for the Snapdragon 888. So we're still on September with nothing in the pipeline. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future. If you want to say thanks, then you can click on the join button and become a member of the channel. And that really helps out. And if you have any comments or questions regarding this month's update, let me know down below. Hopefully it won't be too long until we can do the October update. Like I said, just waiting for that Snapdragon version to be released. So thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.